it's me Matsmus. hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we are talking about a topic that gets asked a lot from me. Um, you know, a lot of live streams, everybody asks the same questions. And then one of the uh, questions that always seems to come up is, Matt, what's the biggest differences between the British Army and the Canadian Army? What is the changes? Why is it so different? Um, and today we're going to answer that question because I don't feel I can really answer it most of the time in a live stream because... Well, it's just a long-winded answer, really. Um, so, first of all, I just want to let you know I'm, I'm both hands on the wheel, hands-free, not looking at the camera because obviously I'm focusing on the road, so I'm just going to talk to you guys. Um, so the British Army and the Canadian Army, if you don't know already, and a lot of people are very confused sometimes in the comments section, I am right now a Canadian Army Reservist in the artillery. I was a regular force serving soldier of the British Army in the Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers as a tank mechanic. Two very different trade groups. So when we talk about the differences between the Canadian and the British Army, it's it's a kind of interesting question because they are almost identical in many, many ways. First of all, the Canadian Army and most of its doctrine in terms of drill, even weapons handling, things like that, is very much based upon British standard doctrine. You've got to remember that Canada was a Commonwealth country and a lot of the tactics and the style of military training is based upon the Commonwealth tactics from the British Army, which is great because when I transitioned from the British Army to the Canadian Army, it wasn't too much of a difficulty, which is one of the reasons as to why I was able to bypass basic training or BMQ and BMQ land um, when I first applied for the Canadian Army Reserves, which is fantastic because I did a year of basic <laughs> at Army Foundation College Harrogate. Trust me, I don't ever want to have to do basic again. It was fun, I enjoyed it, but we've all done our time being dragged around in basic training, so that was really nice. So there's one of the starts to the changes in the British Army and the Canadian Army. In the British Army, you do phase one training, phase two training, and then you go normally into the field army. In the Canadian Army, it's a little differently. You do BMQ, which is a basic military qualification, which is what everyone does, no matter what trade group you are, whatever military force you are, everyone does it. Air Force, Navy, Army, you all do it. Um, whereas in the British Army, obviously it's a specific trade group as in phase one. The British Army doesn't train with the Air Force and the Navy and, and other branches in basic training because that's not how it works. The Canadian Army, they do. They send a lot of people to St. Jean, which is uh, in Quebec, which is a basic training facility, a very large training establishment. Uh, a lot of the reservists obviously don't do that. We do weekend or uh, course-based training which is like a, over the summer period. Now, I can't speak to the British Army reservist side of life because it's a very different mentality um, and setup than it is to uh, the rank force that I was a part of. So to me, it's a little bit like comparing apples to oranges when people ask this question is to be like, you know, how I can't really speak too much in terms of changes between the British Army and the Canadian Army when I'm working from two different lifestyles, a reservist and a rank force. But there are some things that, you know, I can definitely relate to between those two differences. So BMQ is one of the things that completely changes. Another thing is BMQ land. BMQ land is a specific trade uh, course, basic course, that you must do to be part of the army in the Canadian Armed Forces. So it's more so like section attacks, um, heavier weaponry, things like that. Uh, I've heard a lot of good things about the course. It's a lot of fun. You get a lot of uh, field exercise time, which is good. It's always fun actually getting out of the classroom and doing what you need to do. Other big changes from the British Army to the Canadian Army. Um, the uniform, obviously, is a little different, but still, for the most part, very similar. Um, CAD Pat is our standard Canadian pattern uniform that we have right now. There has been some discussion about it changing. I don't know if or when that's going to be happening um, in the near future, but the, the camouflage scheme is obviously differently. When I was in the British Army, it was DPM, so Destructive Pattern Material. I really enjoyed it. When I was just about to leave, uh, they went into MTP or multi-cam terrain pattern, uh, which is, you know, a lot of people really have a lot of good things to say about it. I really liked it. Um, so the camouflage did, uh, and, and clothing that you wear is very different. The equipment is very different. Uh, the rucksacks are very large. Uh, in the Canadian Armed Forces, we obviously do a lot of snow training. And that's, I would say, one of the biggest differences from the British Army to the Canadian Army is the Canadian Army is very much based upon winter warfare training, and being able to perform in snowy, cold, icy, wet conditions. The British Army is very accustomed to working in desert conditions, um, you know, working in uh, arid environments and temperate environments such as the jungle, 
um, you know, the moors, the Brecon Beacons, rainy, cold, wet environments. Uh, we don't have, and I mean, my time in the British Army, we did not have enough exposure to extreme cold weather environments. I wish we did. Uh, I can almost guarantee you when I was in, if you were to send my old armored company, uh, repair company into a extreme cold condition that Canadian Armed Forces soldiers go into, they would struggle, wholeheartedly struggle. The vehicles, the people, the equipment, we would not get by because we're not accustomed to it. We're not, we're not trained for that environment primarily. We can be, or they could be, um, but in the Canadian Armed Forces, it's our bread and butter. That's what we do. That's part of what we are as a Canadian culture is to live in an environment where it's extremely cold, uh, almost six months of the year. So, of course, training is very important to that. We do a lot of winter warfare training, something you do not do in the British Army. It may have changed a little bit now, uh, but when I was in, I don't think I did any. I mean, really, I don't think I ever even went on exercise hardly when it was snowing. We went probably on a couple of exercises in Germany and that was about it. So winter warfare training is very, very um, forefront of the Canadian Forces and it's a big change. That was a big change for me because I'd never worn mucklocks. I'd never worn extreme cold weather jackets, uh, all this big heavy clothing that, to keep me warm, you know total different mindset you know when you go into winter warfare training or arctic training it's a totally different way of playing the game like you think it's tough when you're a little cold and wet try and be a little cold and wet and then let it freeze and then you know living in a tent in minus 40 it's it's pretty savage it gets pretty rough uh, for a british guy it was a major culture change and, and, and adjustment in the military world to, to do that so that's a really 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 big change that if you are wanting to transfer or wanting to join the Canadian Forces you're gonna to have to get used to that we live in a cold environment you're gonna be doing a lot, a lot of snow training uh, some people don't like that I know a lot of people I've spoke to who wanted to transfer from uh, the British Army to the Canadian Army they're like yeah but I don't want to crawl around in the snow it's like but yeah that's what we do six months of the year we crawl around in the snow because it's where we live <laughs> it's pretty important um, other big changes that I've noticed from the British Army to the Canadian Army the junior ranks um, the mess or the junior ranks as they're called in the British Army they're a little different so in the British Army we have uh, the corporal's mess the sergeant's mess and the officer's mess now I don't know if that's still apparent in the Canadian Forces maybe I'm a little confused just with my own local reserve unit but in my unit for instance we only have a junior ranks and a senior ranks messes what that means is is that we only have uh, corporals uh, mass corporals and gunners or pri untrained privates in one mess and officers and sergeants and warrants in the other mess which to me was a little confusing because I've always had the differential di the, the I've always had the divide between the officers and the senior senior off uh, sorry the officers and the senior warrants or, or warrants mess which was sergeants isn't above to warrant was a little like a, a different world and then you know junior ranks the scumbags were in uh, I say scumbags, we were all very respectable young ladies and men uh, in our mess. And then the officers have theirs. But in the Canadian Armed Forces that I have seen and been exposed to so far, there isn't that triple divide, it's just the two. The reason why the messes are divided like that is so that you have a comfortable environment to be in, that you can speak your mind, chat to one another without having, you know, the worry of, oh, you know, my chain of command is in the same room as me, I can't talk about things that, you know, I may not be able to talk about. That's the nice thing to have. but. It's it doesn't really affect me because I'm not a sergeant, I'm not an officer, but I find it interesting that officers have the same mess as sergeants and warrants um, because at the end of the day, they're still working in the junior rank world just in command of them and officers are in command of pretty much everyone. So that was a little bit of an adjustment change for me. It doesn't really make a difference to me that I'm not exposed to it enough, so it doesn't really matter. Um, other big changes are equipment, as I mentioned before. Um, in the Canadian Armed Forces, we really do just uh, make do with what we have. Um, you know, we are limited in supply of some of the things we have, just due to the fact that there's a lot of uh, transition between people in and out of the reserves. Um, there's, there's priorities that are going on. And, you know, you've kind of just got to accept, you know, uh, that if you have the equipment you have, you just got to roll with it. And uh, it works. We make it work. Um, it's not always the easiest thing to do, but we, we get things done. We get the job done. Uh, in the British Army, it was kind of crazy, especially when I was in, um, the amount of equipment that we were just wasting. We were wasting a lot of equipment, a lot of resources, a lot of inventory on nothing, uh, because it was just there. And uh, being in the Canadian Armed Forces makes you appreciate, especially for me in the Army, that resources, logistics, and supply is limited. You make the use of it to every last bit. 
and it makes you start to adjust your mentality of being a soldier and say, you know what? Like, I don't need 50 garbage bags. How about I just take two, and if I need more, I'll come back. I remember going in Badass, or British Army Training Unit, Southfield, here in Canada, and doing an exercise, and taking tons of stuff out. We're like, yeah, we need all this stuff. Let's, let's hoard, let's get an overhaul of stuff. And uh, we took all this stuff out, and we used probably like 40% of it. We got back, and then we all had to fly back to the UK, and all just got either thrown in the garbage, or just left strewn around, ready for the next battle group, and I'm sure most of them didn't even use it. That's just waste of resources and just poor soldiering in general. Um, it's a big eye opener. You know, when you know you only have limited resources to use and, and equipment, you use it to its full benefit. You know how to repair it. You know how to fix it. Uh, you don't just toss it away when it's done or you think it's broken. It really opens up the ingenuity of the soldier, soldiering mind, you know, improvise, adapt and overcome. And that's what you really have to do. And I think it's a really good thing to have, you know? A lot of people com complain when they say, oh yeah, I, you know, I, I don't have this, I don't have that, I should have this, I should have that. Well, you know what? That That's the way the cookie crumbles. You just gotta roll with it. That's the way That's the way things are. Um, but in the British Army, it was just like, oh, I'll just get extra stuff. And it was wasteful. It's just so wasteful. It's wasteful of money, resources, time, um, and could be, you know, preventing from someone who really needs it at a, at a more important later time. Uh, so that's a really big change, and I, I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good adjustment to have, is that sort of mentality of, okay, I've only got so much gear, make most of it. Another major change is the rations. <laughs> uh, the food's a little different when you go into the field with, with the British Army and Canadian Army. The Canadian Army, you get, uh, you get enough food in my eyes to last you for like 12 hours. It would last you to cover you from morning until night, and then like a patrol overnight probably and that would be about it the british army the 24 hour ration packs i felt lasted a lot longer than the ration packs um that we have here in Canadian armed forces that's just the way that they're, they're com the composition of them is a little different uh, i also found that the sachets that the food comes in uh, with the british army was just there was m more in them there was just more inside the pack which me being a little chubby boy <laughs> no, i'm just kidding um is is good because i i wanted there's one thing that keeps me going and that is to ensure that i have a lot of food uh to do what i need to do and you know a lot of energy and the 24-hour ration packs felt like they just had a lot of energy inside of them you had a lot of calories a lot of good food uh, that's not saying the canadian armed forces isn't good it still has exactly what you need the calorie the calories are correct um but i feel like the the actual physical amount of food you get inside is just not as much as you would get in a British Army ration pack, which, you know, it is, isn't a big deal. Uh, another big change is weapon systems. Um, so, of course, we use uh, the L85A2 in the British Army, and a huge change for me was going into the AR-15 world. Now, before getting into the Canadian Armed Forces, I actually owned my own AR-15. I still do own my own AR-15. Um, and, you know, I, I started to acclimatize to the AR-15 standard, the ergonomics or the, the way in which your body holds a rifle. And it was a little bit of an adjustment, but it was nice to get that little, you know, head start before I got into the army because I could actually operate and use the weapons platform without having a huge amount of training going into, into the army itself. The ergonomics is different. You know, we've had this discussion many times on my channel. Matt, what rifle do you like the best? L85 or an AR-15 or AR-10 or, you know, uh, you know, an M16 style platform. It's very difficult for me to make that comment nowadays because I'm starting to adjust more to the AR-15. But I think ergonomically, I still enjoy the L85. I've, I've used it since I was a cadet at like 11, 12 years old, all the way until, you know, I left the British Army. My muscle memory has always been locked to that. So that was a fairly big adjustment for me, you know, going on firing ranges and shooting ranges and and working with this extended 20 inch barrel that's a little bit further than it normally was with my ballpup configuration. Um, that was that was a bit of a change for me. Uh, it was a good change though. I'm enjoying the AR-15. It's a fun platform to play with. Uh, I wouldn't say play with, but to, to, to shoot and shoot accurately with. That was, a, I think, one of the biggest things for me also that uh, was a bit of a change is, is the way in which the ranges are operated. Very similar to the British Army, almost identical, but the uh, shooting style is is a little changed. In fact, the tables on which you shoot, i.e. the PWT shoots, 
uh, are a little little different to the British Army. And to me, that was a, it was a nice change. Because in the British Army, we do a lot of kneeling shoots, a lot of kneeling. And I suck at kneeling. I'm six foot three, and shooting from the kneeling position was never fun. I got a, I got away with it a little bit in the British Army because the bullpup configuration. It is a 20 inch barrel, but it's recessed back because of the bullpup setup. So I was able to, in the kneeling position, not have to drag out this extended long barrel and, and, and reduce my accuracy because the barrel being further away from my center of mass and my, my firing position. In a Canadian Army, you don't get away with that. You've got a little bit extra you know, length of the rifle to hold there. So when you're in the kneeling position, you've got to make sure you're focusing really, really heavy. The good thing with the Canadian Army is a little bit of a help is they don't do as much kneeling shoots uh, for PWT 1, 2, and 3 which is nice. I'm like, thank God, because I suck at kneeling and I would fail every every PWT. I was never a good, good shot. I was a good shot as cadets with the old GP rifle. I don't know if any of you remember that thing, the handle you pull back. Now they've got like the, I think they've even got the old SA80s. But uh, yeah, so it's it's the the, the shooting tables and the, and the shooting style for the calf is a little different, which is a positive for me, for sure. Um, the rank structures, it is the exact same, pretty much. The, you know, the lower ranks are a little different. We don't have, uh, you know, privates don't have hooks in, in the British Army. Privates, it's no hooks and lance corporals, corporals, all that sort of stuff. So a little bit different in terms of the initial part of the rank structure, but everything else is pretty much identical. Um, the sense of humor is a little different too. Of course, in the British Army, we are a little bit more in terms of sort of, uh, having the light-hearted side of things. We make fun of each other and ourselves a lot more. Uh, not bullying, no way, Jose. I have no respect at all for bullies and no hazing, no way, Jose. I'm just not into that at all. Um, but we, we had this more banter, you know, we had more sort of, uh, we were able to sort of uh, make fun of ourselves a lot more. Uh, I, I feel like in the Canadian Forces or in the Army myself, uh, we are a lot more serious and that's a good thing professional soldiers but sometimes it's nice to when you're in a really tough spot um, you know have some time to you know ha have a laugh and have some downtime you know we used to in the, on exercise with the British Army we used to do like cross-country runs around the fob or around the harbor area um, in just our boxes you know sprinting around and, and you know just things that keep the morale up you know and, and things like that don't fly of course anymore um, but the, the, you know, even just playing football or soccer in the middle of an exercise one day because you know morale was low. You know, it wasn't a tactical exercise. You could kind of just grab a rugby ball, or grab a football, and start playing. That's not a, really a thing so much in the Canadian Army because you know we have limited time to get training done, and you know we don't have time to go and play football or rugby in the middle of an exercise, especially as a reservist because you really are limited for time. You got a weekend sometimes to do what you need to do or two couple of week courses. That ain't gonna fly. So that's what I'm trying to say is comparing apples to oranges. Reservist and reg force is a little bit different. It's it's a different mentality. You know, you, you would have a little bit more time in the reg force to do it. So anyway, that's pretty much the main things that I can think of right now, folks. I hope you uh, learn a little bit about the changes in the British Army, Canadian Army, I guess. Um, if you do have any other questions about changes, put them in the description box or in the comment section below. Uh, I'll try my best to answer them for you and reply to you. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave me a like and make sure you hit the little bell button by the subscribe button so you can be notified of any upcoming videos in the future. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you to everyone who's been supporting my Patreon recently. I cannot express how much it means to me. Thank you so much. Um, and those who also have been contributing towards my CVRT Dream Crowd Fund for my tracked vehicle that I wish to purchase for myself. Thank you again also, um, you know, we're a long, long way away, but it, you know, the little, little in, uh, donations you guys have been making very much are appreciated for me. Honestly, I, I, it's really awkward for me to try and express how much it means to me because I don't know the best way of saying thank you, but thank you, thank you so much. Um, anyway, I will see you on the next video, folks. Have a wonderful day, all the best, bye-bye.